The link between housing, transport and the economy is absolutely central to this agenda. It's important to bring people together from different aspects of the sector, whether it's, uh, you know, we've got people here from the highway sector, we've got passenger groups, we've got people involved in housing development. The key factor to unlocking housing growth is that the transport systems are in place to accommodate the projected increase in population to occur from new homes being built. There still is this very, very basic lack of understanding of what is required in terms of public transport provision in the field of development control and that's why the Transport Knowledge Hub is so important because one of the things that we're trying to do is to increase awareness. Previous research by KPMG for the Transport Knowledge, Knowledge Hub has shown that investment in sustainable transport is going to be key to unlocking the benefits of new housing. A lot of the research that we've been focusing on uh, recently is trying to show the various reasons why we're not always getting the best transport outcomes from new housing developments. We have enormous housing targets now uh, here in London. The new draft London plan, 66,000 homes a year. I don't think we've ever reached that figure. Last year we, we built around half that. Individual local authority areas aren't big enough to justify transport investment on their own, but regions are. And I think government is recognising that now. The growth of the combined authority mayors has been supported now by at least two governments. What we need to take from this report is a great level of certainty about how to take the work forward and to work together both locally and nationally to deliver what is really deliverable and achievable within this project. If we can actually integrate sustainable transport into a housing development at that early planning stage um, then it will mean that there is less need <coughs> for this, this really costly infrastructure. We do lots of work on appraisal of transport schemes uh, like East West Rail and Crossrail 2 and what you found, find now is that the case for those schemes is very much bound up in how they can release investments in housing. With the drive for so many more houses and then yet how do you connect those houses to the places that, want, places that people want to go and to be so it helps bringing together a really good diverse range of people. When are we going to get some sort of direct rail link from the southwest of England into Heathrow? Isn't it time this was scrapped and we had a, an investment appraisal approach which recognised the reality of what really happens, as you've described. The thing that I have persistently pursued and was mentioned today rightly, I think by Rupert, is the importance of integrating transport into a spatial plan, into the local plan, and having it as part of the planning process. New communities want access to healthcare, they want access to education, they want somewhere to work. Uh, they want somewhere to go at the weekends that's nice and green, as well as wanting somewhere to get about. Our mission is to fix the broken housing market uh, and play our part in contributing to the target of 300,000 new homes per year. Land value capture is not a silver bullet. Um, it was, you know, it was cited to us by stakeholders the fact that what works in London and the South East will not work in the North necessarily. The transport systems now need to be sort of be flexible to the challenge and opportunity of technological advancement and we need to build that into the way that we design communities now. We had London, the South East, England's economic heartland all represented uh, in the same room on the panel so we were able to tease out some of those important issues that cut across urban and rural areas across the whole of the South East.